I was recently reading an article online or a story about Stephen King and how he got its start and it's pretty amazing how rejection really just means redirection. Also, before we get into the story, thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring part of this video. Let me share with you the story. Stephen King, when he was first starting out, one of his first novels that he wrote was Carrie, which as we know today has had a huge impact on pop culture. Even if you haven't read the book or seen the movie, I'm sure you're familiar with some of these images here of the movie uh, cover or the book cover, but it wasn't always a smooth sailing for him. He actually applied or sent the script to 30 publishers. So time after time again, he would send the script to publishers only to be rejected. Imagine being rejected 30 times. At that point, you kind of feel like, maybe I'm not very good. Maybe my work isn't that good. So in turn, what did he do? He threw his script out, like many of us would. He threw out the novel he was writing for Carrie and wrote it off. And that really would have been the end of Carrie if it wasn't for his wife, who saw that it was in the garbage and actually went and picked it up and had the book published. Fast forward to today, we know he is a huge success and so much of it has to do with that publishing of the book Carrie. I really liked that story when I heard because it made me think about how much, as I said at the beginning of this video, rejection can be redirection. Meaning, even if you hear no or you're not good enough so many times, even 30 times or more, especially when you're job hunting, it doesn't mean that you aren't on the right track. And I wanted to share that story with you for this video on how to learn technical things quickly with a full-time job because oftentimes when you are working a full-time job trying to learn something new on the side, you are going to be told time after time again from friends, from family, even from your own mind, some conscious telling you this, which is why are you spending your little time you have left of the day after working on learning something new, on something that you don't even know will result in maybe more income or results in a better way of life. Why are you spending your time doing that? And if you listen to people telling you that or asking you these questions, these negative people or negative thoughts, they don't necessarily mean negative people, you're naturally going to stop learning and stop putting attention to learning these technical or whatever it is you're learning things and say, you know what? This is my life. This is as good as it gets. There's no point in improving it. Actually, speaking of improving it, before we get into this video, I wanna share with you a tool because we're gonna to be talking about tools in this video that really helps you uh, work faster, work smarter. Let, you know what, let me show you. Also, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career-related content. Okay, now let me show you. Speaking of skills you need to thrive in the future workforce, we need a portfolio to put all these skills, to show them off. And that is where HubSpot's drag and drop website builder comes into play. Let me show you. First off, you can choose from hundreds of themes to get started, which makes the process super simple. If you are like me and not a designer or don't have an eye for design, it's sad but true, having themes to start with is absolutely key. Being able to choose from different themes of what represents you the best, but also to what you're trying to portray. Then you can simply add a custom domain and start building. Also, I really like their WYSIWYG editor so I can see what I am building. As a side note, there is no code required, which is huge for anyone who is looking to build a portfolio, maybe doesn't either have the coding knowledge, or if you're like me, maybe don't have the time to spend building a portfolio to showcase your skills. Okay, I know I'm sharing a lot about them in terms of using them to build your own portfolio to showcase your skills, but they are also a great place to build a business website for yourself, your friends, or if you are starting to freelance, maybe clients. For example, you can actually leverage their CRM platform to access all the tools you need for your own business or client's business. If you are building a client business, you can then add on different services using HubSpot by being able to gather further insights. There is a built-in website reporting and the ability to track and convert leads into future customers. I link them down below, so make sure to go sign up for free today and start building your website. The first one is use technology to your advantage. Okay, I thought that'd be way cooler than it was. That's kind of weird. But use technology to your advantage. Tech can be good. I know we talk a lot about the negative side of tech. Well, not we, we don't do that so much, but there's a lot of hype around the negative side effects and how it is bad for you, but you can really use technology to help you study and be more efficient with your time. 
This is what I did a ton when I was first starting out, but I, I still do today when I'm learning something new is outsourcing to technology. Meaning when I'm on the transit or when I get Paul to drive so I can sit in the passenger seat and study. Even using AI nowadays for things like quiz me on X, Y, and Z to really see where I'm at with my learnings is a huge time saver, a huge helper, especially because sometimes when you are learning something new, you can feel very isolated and alone, almost as though you're on this journey alone there's no one there to help you and I think equally with technology which could be mentioned in in this part of the video is about community and online communities because they really go hand in hand with technology one thing that really helped me okay I gotta sit up on here this is just you know I gotta get comfy one thing that really helped me was joining different communities joining different slack communities I'm not a big discord person I find myself gravitating towards slack communities more but there are a ton of great discord study channels out there as well and getting very specific in these groups. So for example, when I was studying React, I would join some React Slack groups. When I was studying uh, public speaking, I joined some public speaking groups. And there's also two I find opportunities within those groups, those study groups that are shared. So for example, in the public speaking one I was part of, they often shared, okay, well, there's this opportunity coming up at this event. They need X, Y, they need a few more speakers. Does anyone want to speak at this event? So it kind of has a win-win there, but it's a great way to really hold yourself accountable to studying and also to, use tech to your advantage. Okay, you know that story I told at the beginning about Stephen King and his wife? That brings us to point number two, which is you need to have a support system. Support systems can look so different depending on who you are and where your situation is at. This for him was his wife and how she really changed his life and once again, pop culture and so much more by believing in him, even when he didn't believe in himself. And the support doesn't have to be someone who is significant in your life in any aspect in the sense of, well, going back to my example, I guess, is when I was studying at first anyways, a lot of times I felt like I was bothering my family or bothering my friends by asking them to be my support system or to hold me accountable. Accountable. So once again, what I did was kind of going back to point number one, join those communities, those online groups. And that was where I found the most value for support. So support can look so different in many different ways. It doesn't have to be your significant other. It doesn't have to be your friends. It can be someone that you've never met online. I mean, it can be me if you want, watching these videos, commenting, I always comment back, connecting with me on different social platforms. I'm here to support you. And just knowing that other people are going through what you are going through, I find anyways, is half the battle. Knowing you aren't alone, that you aren't going crazy by thinking, why am I spending my time learning these new skills? Which really brings me to another kind of side note point, which is you have to understand why you are learning these skills. It can't be motivating or disciplined enough to be like, I'm learning this because it's cool, because it's trendy. No, you have to have a why and always reflect back to that why. Why are you learning this? Is it for a better way of life? Well, what does that mean? Is it for your kids? Is it because you're passionate about something, wanting to stay relevant? What is the case? Because that will keep on driving you forward. And of course, the last one is take time for yourself. This is something I struggled with and I still really do, but I'm learning the importance of putting yourself first in order to have better results when you are focusing on learning something new. Learning something new is, especially in tech, we're gonna be doing it our entire lives. We're going to continue to evolve and grow hopefully anyways, and we can't keep on pushing 24 seven. We need to find this balance and balance might not even exist, but to some degree, this peace within us that we're never going to know it all. And that's okay. I've seen way too many people when they are first starting out burn out so quickly because they go full force and then in turn they crash. Not only have I seen so many people do this, I have done it myself. And I recognize it took me so long, way too long, probably longer than most people, that actually taking a step back, doing things for me, not just going, 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 will actually propel me faster ahead head faster. And why it does that is because you are more at peace with yourself, you are relaxed, you are less stressed. And in turn, when you are spending time learning something new, it's quality time. It's actually not just quantity where you're going, going, but not really retaining anything. I mean, so many studies have shown that a restful mind, actually sleeping after you study, uh, can really help remember things longer, help with growing and learning quicker. So it's really important. I don't want to sound cheesy or whatnot, but 
to put yourself first, find something that you love outside of technology, outside of whatever it is you are learning and that you get passionate about as well because that too will help you within your career. And it can't just be 24 seven go. You need to have something that you can relax. And I think a lot of us have trouble relaxing. We think that, what, for me anyways, when I relax, I get stressed about relaxing, that I shouldn't be relaxing. And then in turn, I'm not relaxing. And then in turn, I get stressed out about that. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. Take time for yourself, identify things that make you happy, and make sure to focus on that. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this video. It was something I needed to make right now because I was feeling a lot of these ways. You know, I work full time, I, then I do YouTube and content on the side. Then on top of that, I need to be continuously learning, especially for my job in developer relations. I always need to be up to date with what is coming up in the pipeline, coming up, coming down the pipeline for latest tech trends, being aware of what's going on, learning new technologies quickly. And these are some of the ways that really help me stay focused and on track. And also too, that are reasonable. I'm tired of hearing these tips that are so uh, crazy and so out there, so bold. And it's like, how, this is, doesn't make sense. Sometimes you need to get back to simplicity, back to the basics, and you will find success that way. Cause there's no, there's no secret pill or overnight success. You just gotta put in the work. All right, on that note, I'm curious to know, what are you spending your time learning right now? Leave in the comments, leave other video suggestions in the comments and okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.